Early this morning, a prominent research institute is claiming an important part of, of what will lead to your life being freer is being missed by the much quoted Doty modelling. And that factor is Australia's test, trace and quarantine system. Dr. Richard Dennis is the Canberra-based Chief Economist of the Australia Institute and is the author of this recent work. Dr. Dennis, good morning to you. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. How important is a test, trace, isolate and quarantine system of any state or territory in the here and now to relax restrictions and enjoy a more open life? Oh, it's, it's the most important variable. I mean, think of it this way. When the Ruby Princess landed and disgorged hundreds of people with COVID into Australia, we had no vaccines. We had no vaccines at all, all through last year. We only had one tool all last year, and it was our contact tracing and testing, <clears throat> excuse me, and our isolation. It is, even according to the Doherty modelling, our contact tracing and isolation system is equivalent to around 50, uh, uh, to, to vaccinating around 50 or 60% of the population. You cannot, you can't stress just how important it has been to date, but it's starting to collapse in New South Wales. And why isn't it, if that's the case, spoken about in the same light of as 70 to 80 percent vaccination, getting jabs in arms. We all know the cliches and how often they're spoken about. Uh, look, I think what's happened is when the modelling was done, uh, they had good data on how effective contact tracing had been in New South Wales last year. And they'd also had good data on how effective it had been at the, at the peak of Melbourne's epidemic when there were 700 cases a day. So the modelling is based on the assumption that uh, at worst contact tracing in Australia will be as stretched and strained as it was in Victoria when it had 700 cases. Mm. But obviously New South Wales has already got a thousand cases. Yesterday over 800 of those thousand cases were mystery cases and in the Doherty modelling while it factors in TTIQ, what's called t testing tracing isolation and quarantine, while the Doherty modelling factors in the existence of TTIQ regimes and how important they are, what the Doherty modelling literally assumes is that our ability to trace across Australia over the next six months never gets worse than Victoria's experience last year. Is it and quite it's, al it's already worse. So I'm just about to say, is it possible it will get worse than the Victorian situation of tracing last year and could it get a lot worse in fact in New South Wales? Oh, it already is. Like yesterday's case numbers, over 1,000 people infected in New South Wales, more than Victoria ever had. But what's more concerning is that 800 of those, 800 of those uh, were mystery cases. Now that means the contact tracers have already been overwhelmed. Now, to, to be very clear, what the Doherty modelling assumes is that there is no direct relationship between the number of cases and the effectiveness of our traces. Why wouldn't it assume that if you're saying they're so closely linked? Because when the modelling was, well, you'd have to ask them. And, and it's, it's, it's true that when the head of Doherty says in their modelling, initial case numbers don't count. That's true. In their model, the initial case numbers don't count. But in reality, the initial case numbers will determine whether our tracing system is working. And again, you know, to be generous, I think that back in June when they were doing this modelling, they probably looked at Victoria's second wave and thought, well, it'll probably never get that bad again. And that was probably a reasonable assumption in June. But mm. to be crystal clear, we now have the Prime Minister waving modelling around saying the Doherty Institute says it doesn't matter how many initial cases there are. Well, it, he's accurately describing their model but their model is not accurately describing how the Australian system works. Dr Richard Dennis is our guest, Canberra-based Chief Economist of the Australia Institute. Their new work today highlights the importance of the testing, tracing, isolation and quarantine systems across Australia and how that should be a real-world consideration of any discussion of reopening, of any discussion of trying to squash or at least suppress the impact of Delta. Adam Shirley with you on ABC Radio Canberra. And key for anyone listening now, and Chief Minister Barr alluded to this yesterday, what problems at 17 to 9 Richard Dennis could arise for the ACT if New South Wales does not get its TTIQS together? 
Oh, look, the consequences for, for Canberra, indeed the consequences for Australia are catastrophic. And, and that's why I think that the, the state premiers aren't going to open up until New South Wales gets its testing and tracing back under control. So to give you a specific example, uh, if someone in Goulburn or if someone in Queanbeyan today uh, were infected and the New South Wales testing and tracing regime was working as highly effective, then we in Canberra would instantly be on high alert. But we need to know who in Goulburn has been exposed if us in Canberra are to protect ourselves from that. And to be clear, in the Doherty modelling, it assumes that we have a very, very good ability uh, to, to do that testing, tracing and isolation. Whereas we know that there are people in New South Wales who days after testing positive, days, uh, are even yet to be contacted by the health department. Now, that's not a criticism of the individuals. That's just proof that a testing and tracing regime that works when you've got 200 cases a day breaks down when you get to 1,000 cases a day. And to be clear, New South Wales at the moment is on track for 2,000 cases a day. So to keep assuming that the quality of tracing and the quality of isolation is going to remain constant, as the Doherty modelling does, uh, well, that's, that's just entire, not just unrealistic, it's unhelpful, and I think it will lead to bad decisions. How much could it potentially further risk the ACT, no matter how well this region does in suppressing and containing Delta? Well, it's interesting. I mean, you know, the Prime Minister says he just wants to get rid of lockdowns. Well, the best way to get rid of lockdowns is to have really effective contact tracing in place, because if New South Wales can't keep track uh, of what's happening across it, on its side of the border, then we have to keep our border. Uh, we have to keep our border a lot more tightly closed. So the irony is that if the prime minister wants to achieve his goal of opening up, then New South Wales has to not just get on top of the outbreak; it has to get its testing and tracing back as well to doing as good a job as it was last year. And if it does that then the rest of the country can open up. But to, to say to states like Queensland with no COVID that they should open up to a state that can't even figure out you know, who, who's spoken to someone with COVID, uh, that's, 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 that's not, uh, I think, an honest interpretation of what the Doherty modelling is suggesting. If the ACT continues its run, its leading, nearly leading race to have uh, the highest percentage in Australia of its population vaccinated, will that help? Of course, and everyone who can get vaccine vaccinated today should. I mean, this is the problem that we're now having a phony conversation about whether we should vaccine, uh, vaccinate or whether we should open up. Um, let's be crystal clear. Everyone who can get vaccinated should. They should do it as quickly as they can if the medical advice to them is that they should do that. There's no doubt about that. But at the same time that we're vaccinating people, we have to stay on top of the contact tracing and you can't stay on top of, on top of contact tracing when you literally have 800 mystery cases yesterday so the only way for tracing to be effective is if we use lockdowns and vaccinations and other things to keep the numbers low enough that the contact tracers can actually do their job because again last year we had no vaccine none we had no weapons to fight COVID, not a single one, except the ability of our contact tracers. Mm -hmm. And it worked. It worked again and again. And the only reason that people in Perth uh, have the freedoms they have today is because contact tracing last year stopped the virus spreading across the country.